We're now going to talk about the effect of location on your ability to access information. So where you are, your location can massively affect how information is available to you. Now we have networks, we have the internet and so on, but not everyone, even in England, even in the UK, has got consistent access based on their location, right? For example, this is a map of London and the sort of strength of 4G. Now, these areas where there is not the red, so there's sort of no color at all, these are not exactly, you know, middle of nowhere. There are some big towns and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot going on near London, of course, but still there's some quite weak signals in lots of these places, let alone if you go to the countryside where it's much less built up. These are what you might call rural areas, not so much here, but in the countryside, rural is where there isn't much, um, where there aren't many cities or towns and not many people about. So thinking farmland, thinking countryside, that's what rural means. And often they've got weaker mobile phone coverage, which then affects your ability to do certain things on your phone. Likewise, understandably, I suppose, but cities, so built up areas, are often prioritised when it comes to upgrading things like infrastructure. So the infrastructure are the components of networks. So for example, 5G has got rolled out in cities, not in the more rural areas. So again, you sort of are lucky if you live near a city, less lucky if you don't. And having something like 5G might enable you to do video calls and send emails more easily and do more business on the go. That makes it better for you if you are in a city. It's not really fair if you're not. So we have sort of rural, countryside, urban cities when you hear those two words. Now, if you are in particular in a rural location, there might be some areas where actually there's no coverage at all, or at least is intermittent. If coverage is intermittent, that means it kind of drops in and out, is a bit inconsistent. You might get signal one minute and not the next. That can be caused because there aren't many masts around. These are what actually broadcast for signals. They might get blocked by things like hills and mountains and weather too. You wouldn't think things like rain and snow would block signals, but actually it can do and interfere with it. Even in say cities, in more urban areas, there are certain black spots. A black spot is where you get no or intermittent signal. And that can occur due to things like obstruction. If you've got a new building, which is a lot of concrete, that can block signals. Equally, if it's really, really old and it's stone, for example, that can block signals too. But even other interference occurs. For example, if you've got loads of Bluetooth devices and Wi-Fi devices in your home, the wireless signals can interfere and cause errors which means the network slows down and can affect your ability to do much. And all of this is you know, happening within the UK, but thinking more globally, there is, of course, a lot of inequality in our world, unfortunately, but there's inequality regarding digital connections as well. So the digital global divide is the gap between people that do and don't have access to technology. And a significant number of countries a significant number of people within certain countries just don't have access effectively to things like the internet. And that's gonna massively affect their ability to get jobs, to do something like remote working. You know, if you're in a country which is developed and has good internet, you might be able to work remotely and have lots of choice about where you wanna work. But if you don't have internet and or have a weak signal, it's going to affect what you can do. And so location is a factor in people being able to access global networks like the internet.